Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. We want to bless the name of the Lord for another opportunity to gather here this last Saturday of March. Um, we are convening again to take on, on our weekly midnight prayers. And we want to thank God because this is a rare opportunity for us to pray for pastors, evangelists, um, bishops. We're praying for prophets, the priests, and all the leaders that the Lord has appointed to take care of his sheep. And we have given ourselves this mandate this year by the grace of God to stand in the gap and intercede for God's generals. And we want to thank God for the opportunity. Before we start, we're going to um, seek the face of the Lord on this. Father, we want to thank you and bless you and honor you for the opportunity to pray. It is truly a rare opportunity because not everyone can pray. And even those who can pray, not everyone is willing to pray. But here we are, we are willing and we can pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to bless your holy name for everyone who has joined me today online and those who will be listening to this audio uh, tape later on, we just pray, Lord, that your blessings, the blessings that knows no limit, those blessings that come from the throne of God will rest upon us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're asking that our prayer, our supplications, and our petition will come up to you like sweet smelling savor. We ask, Father, that we will find favor in your sight as Esther found favor in the sight of the king. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we bless you. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I believe the Lord is leading us to um, divert a little bit from our regular pattern of prayer for his generals. Um, if you remember, we've been praying a lot from the book of Jeremiah, from the book of Nehemiah, and of course the psalm. And our focus has been praying for um, for sanctity in the household of God, among men of God. Um we'll be looking at how that the prophets, even in those old, in, in the olden days, the prophets and the priests at some point in their lives became very unfaithful. And even though the Lord had appointed them to speak his mind to the hearing of his people, but at some point in their ministry, they deviated. We looked at um, quite a number of these prophets, you know, from the book of Jeremiah. And because of what the prophets um, did in their time, God had to abandon his covenant, the children of Israel, and took them into captivity. And even in captivity, these prophets did not repent. They were still prophesying lies. And we have been praying and asking God that he will sanctify our prophets in this generation and raise true prophets like Jeremiah, true prophets like Ezekiel and all the other true prophets in the word of God, that God will raise many more true prophets in our generation. Um, and we want to thank God because I know the Lord has heard us and the Lord is doing something about it. And we want to bless his name for that. Okay. So um, 
Today's prayer is slightly different. We are going to be taking our prayer basically from the book of um, Exodus and from the book of Numbers. Um, this was a story of the man of God, Moses, and his um, assistant, Joshua. Um, while I was praying this morning, the Lord led me into this scripture to see something that I want to share with you very briefly. Um, and also we'll be using this scripture to pray for God's general um, afterward. Okay, so I'll be taking my reading from um, Joshua. Sorry, take my reading from um, Exodus chapter 33. Let's look at Exodus chapter 33, verse, verse 11. It says, so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he will return to the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. That's Exodus chapter 33, verse 11. So there was this young man called Joshua that was walking with Moses. Consciously or subconsciously, he just found himself attached to Moses. And wherever Moses was, there also he was. He was a very faithful young man. The Bible even said, when the Lord has finished speaking to Moses, the Moses will leave the camp. So Moses will leave the presence of the, of the Lord and return to the camp. But Joshua, this young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Um, let's look at Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 20, sorry, number chapter 27. Numbers chapter 27. I'll be reading from verse 14. He says, for when the community rebelled at the waters in the desert of Zin, both you disobeyed my command to honor me as holy before their eyes. These were the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the desert of Zin. Moses said to the Lord, may the Lord the God who gives breath to all living things, appoint someone over this community to give out, sorry, to go out and come in before, before them. One who will lead them and um, one who will lead them out and bring them in. So the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit of leadership and lay your hand on him. Have him stand before Eliezer, the priest and the entire assembly and commission him in their presence. Give him some of your authority so the whole Israelite uh, and the community will obey him. He is to stand before Eleazar, the priest, who will obtain decisions for him by inquiring of the Urim before the Lord. At this command, um, at his command, um, he and the entire community of the Israelites will go out. And at his command, they will come in. Hallelujah. Amen. So our prayer today is focused on inheritance, spiritual inheritance. Now, one of the struggles we have in the church today, particularly among 
churches and ministries that are either family based or um one one person i don't want to say one man but one person's base is that um it's difficult to find someone that will inherit that ministry it's usually a struggle for many people partly because not every pastor's wife pastor's child or pastor's wife is able to take over their ministry when um, the man of God needs somebody to help. And um, shifting responsibilities to others usually uh, takes a toll because in at some cases there, there is a, a, a kind of a, a scramble, either a scramble or a completely lack of someone to take over. So in this case, or in any of those two cases, whether it is a scramble for the position or lack of it, there are certain things that needs to be done so that we can we can we can we can pass the baton to the right person because you see continuity and consistency in the spiritual realm is what makes um, our calling substantiated. Nobody wants to die and go away with his anointing. And the thing he has experienced, usually it's better to pass it on to someone else who will, in addition to what the blessings of the Lord is on that person, they can carry on the work of ministry on the behalf of the man of God. So we are looking at this example today from Moses and Joshua. Now, God had in this circumstance told Josh, um, sorry, told Moses that he will not go into the promised land because of the sin him and his brother committed in um in one of the places they call it um the river say say in the he said he said um in verse in verse 15 sorry in verse 14 he says for when the community rebelled at the waters in the desert of Zin, both of you disobeyed my command to honor me as holy before their eyes. These were the waters of Maribah Kadesh in the desert of Zin. So because of this sin that Moses committed, the Lord... Um, rejected even his request to be led into the promised land with the other children of Israel. So the Lord told him that he was going to die in the desert. So the first thing I want us to see here is the response of Moses. The response of Moses. One, Moses says, Lord, please, I want you to appoint someone that will take over me, someone that is capable and competent to take over me to lead this community to the promised land. He says in verse 7, to go out and come in before them, one who will lead them out and bring them in, so the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. What a heart, what a heart. The Bible says Moses is the meekest of all men at his time and even today. No one is as meek as Moses, except of course the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, who um, had his, his humility, his meekness, you know, brought him to the point of submitting his life to death. But any man that is born by a woman and that had gone through this life, the Bible says there is no one that was as meek as Moses was. So you see, he was not counting his own benefit. He was not even looking 
at his own interest. He was looking at the interest of the community. In that, in that, in that sense, he was looking at the interest of the church, the congregation of the church. So he cried out to the Lord. He said, Lord, please appoint somebody that will lead them in and out so that these people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord has heard his prayer immediately. He says, so the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the right spirit of leadership. Is the right spirit of leadership. So see the second point. The second point is getting the right people that will take over the baton from the pastors and the leaders of different churches and ministry when they are older. How do you figure out these people? First, the Lord said, take Joshua because he has the spirit of leadership. Not everybody has the spirit of leadership who wants to lead. But our ability to figure out those who have this spirit is very important. Now, the third thing is that the Lord said to Moses, have him stand before Eleazar, the priest, and the entire assembly and commission him in their presence. Give him some of your authority so the whole Israel assembly will obey him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I heard somebody said something some time ago which stuck with me. He says, if God was going to bless you, he will not give you money. He wouldn't give you anything tangible. God will give you the word. He will first of all give you a word. And this is the kind of blessing that the Lord asked Moses to give Joshua. He says, you will commission him in the presence of the people and give him your authority. How do you give your authority? You speak it into his life and he will become that thing you spoke over his life. And these are the things that i like us to pray today for the leadership of the church. That God will grant um, leaders and especially those who are in their in their in their um, season of uh, retirement, that the Lord God will grant them a, a heart for the community. Here, the community means the church. That they will look up to God to um, provide them someone, someone that will take over them we take over the responsibility of the Lord, you know, um, and not just leave things um, haphazardly or to chance. Okay, so that, that's going to be our first prayer. So if you, if, if you know of a church who is probably going through this season, uh, this is the time to pray for them. But even if you don't know any church, uh, pray, because there are many, many, many ministries, many, many churches that are seeking um, the right direction on what to do in how um, they can they can um, bring about continuity in their ministry by passing over the baton to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless you and honor you for this time to pray. Lord, I lift up my voice. We lift up our voices up to you this evening. He that sits in the circle of heaven, who knows our going out and our coming in. Lord, we are praying and asking you this, uh, this very early uh, uh, hour of, uh, of Saturday, Lord, that you will please uh, uh, raise uh, uh, favor, that you will bring uh, clarity and understanding to every ministry who is seeking someone to take over. They may be uh, in Canada, they may be in the US, they may be in Africa, they may be in Asia, wherever. 
you know the ministries right now that are seeking for the right person to take over a church or take over a ministry. We pray, oh God, that you will raise Joshua's. You will raise Joshua's, the kind of Joshua's that have leadership capability in the name of Jesus. Um, we're just praying also that you, you, you put a meekness in the hearts of the older ones, a kind of meekness that will give you the opportunity to point to them who is the right person to take over. They will not think about their own interests, but they will think about the interests of the continuity of uh, God's um, mission and God's call in, in this land of the living. In the name of Jesus, Father, we worship you, we exalt you. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Okay, so um, our next prayer point is to ask that the Lord God um, will, the Lord, the Lord God will raise um, young people that are really, really interested and can invest their lives in the work of God the way Joshua uh, invested his life. You know, one of the things that I didn't tell you was um, a story I read here in Numbers chapter 13. The Bible says Moses was the one who changed the name of Joshua um, from, so his his name was uh, um, Hosea, Hosea, and God changed, sorry, Moses changed his name from Hosea to Joshua. Um, and that change of name was very significant because he worked so closely with Moses, so much so that Moses was able to receive a new name, a new destination for Joshua. But also, if you remember where we read in, in, in Exodus, much earlier on before the appointment of Joshua, of Joshua to take over Moses, much earlier on in the book of uh, Exodus, the Bible says he was with Moses in the tabernacle. Even when Moses receives from the Lord and leaves the tabernacle, Joshua was staying in the tabernacle to continually be in the presence of God on his behalf and on behalf of the people of Israel. He was so faithful. If you also remember, Joshua was one of the 12 that was sent to go and spy Jericho. And when they came back, the other 10 became fearful and discouraged. But Joshua and Caleb were strong in their faith and they held on to the Lord and they said, they can go over and overtake the enemy. So Joshua is a rare kind of young man. He is a rare kind of character that many ministries are seeking and looking for today. And I want us to pray that the Lord will raise Joshua's. He will raise Joshua's in your church. He will raise Joshua's in your ministry. He will raise Joshua in your province, in your cities, in your country. Men of integrity, men that have the spirit of God, humility, those kind of men that will do anything to hang around you, to tap the anointing, to receive the things that you have walked through. So they are not starting all over again, but they are mounting on the anointing that God has given you as a minister, as an elder in the church, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and bless you and honor you for today's prayer. Lord, I cry out to you. Please raise Joshua's. Great Joshua, I pray that you raise Joshua's in my local church here. Raise Joshua around the churches in my vicinity. Please raise Joshua's in our province, in our country, and all over the world. 
put a spirit in these young men that they will truly be like Joshua. A man that is so selfless, a man that looked intently into Moses' life, that Moses, he did not even give his inheritance to his own children, his own blood children, but he found Joshua a greater child. He found a greater child in Joshua and he passed his anointing to him. I pray that you will raise our children to become true Joshua's raise other people that are working with us to be true Joshua's in the name of Jesus. Father, we are jealous over your kingdom. We are jealous over the purpose of God for this generation. And we stand in the gap and pray that the work of ministry will not grow cold. We pray, oh God, that the church of Jesus Christ is moving and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. I pray for the upward movement of the church. For I pray, Lord, for increase. I pray for depth and width around the church. Father, that even in this generation, we will not relent. We will not grow weary. We will not be tired. Father, we worship you because you will bless this generation with Moses. You will bless this generation with Joshua's. You will give us a vision. You will give us understanding on how to pass on the inheritance to our younger ones. We will not handle this carelessly, but intentionally, Father, we will plan for passing over the baton to our own children. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we worship and exalt you. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. We give you worship and honor for this time. Be thou glorified and honored in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for praying and um, staying with me this night just to intercede on behalf of the Church of Jesus. The Bible says the Church of Jesus Christ is marching and the gates of hell will not prevail. God has made that comment and statement boldly because he knows that you and I will be praying. He knows that we are not going to relent. We are going to watch over the gates of our churches that the gate of hell will not prevail. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a very nice weekend and see you next week. God bless. <music>